very happy to have you all here on this beginning, the unofficial beginning of summer. Yay! Yay. Last week I was wearing a sweater. Today is the unofficial beginning of summer. Thank goodness. Um, I'm so happy you are all here today. Not only are you here today, but we are joined on Facebook Live by some friends. Um, if you are ever not able to be here, and I hope that never happens, but you will be able to see us on Facebook Live. So, um, or you'll be able to watch later on Facebook Live. We have just a few announcements today. Anybody notice anything happening over in Fellowship Hall? Have you walked over there lately? Fellowship Hall, Fellowship Building, I'm afraid it's going to sink into the ground. We are overwhelmed with, in a wonderful way, with things to sell. This is a tremendous way for us to serve our community and be good stewards of all of the gifts that God gives to us. We take things that people no longer need or use or have a, have a purpose for in their life, and we make it available to other people. Yeah. It keeps it out of yeah. the landfill. It keeps it, um, in, it allows people to get things at a price that they can afford. Because you know by the end of the weekend, we're pretty much giving everything away. <laughs> so um, this is the weekend, or this is the week <coughs> to let folks know it's time to come on Friday and Saturday and take advantage of the bargains. After church today, I think we're going to forego faith formation and just go over there en masse and help organize things. Uh, Welcome Center does exist, but it's in the kitchen today. So I saw a bunch of really good looking snacks in the kitchen. So Paula, do you want to add to <laughs> June Fest? I'm dressed for sorority. There you go. <laughs> um, so it does look good.
flyer on St. Luke's Facebook page again, please just hit share. That's all you need to do, and it goes up on your page, so all your friends will then see it. That's all you need to do. Find the St. St. Luke's post, hit share, and it goes out. It will quadruple or more than the amount of people that see it. So if you could do just that much, that would be amazing for us. So thank you for that. Um, there are several things in the announcements that you can take a look at. I want to highlight uh, two. We have a, uh, our Boy Scout troop here, and as we've talked about, they are such a help to us at different times, and I really want to reach out and be a help to them. They have a fundraiser car wash on June the 8th in our parking lot. If you can just run by and let them wash your car, it's a free will donation, I believe, so dig deep. These kids have helped us time and time again. They're at community dinner. They're at cleanup day. They're at all kinds of activities. June Fest. June Fest. They come with, and they honestly, they're helpful when they're here. These kids, they've got great leaders who keep a good eye on them, but they're good kids. So I would love for us to use this opportunity to pay them back. So I know your car is covered with pollen because my car is covered with pollen. Yeah, you're gone. So uh, let's, let's please, please, please consider that. I appreciate that. The other thing I want to mention, there's some, um, didn't get into our announcements this bulletin. The women's retreat has been locked down. It is October 11th to the 13th. That is the weekend we have reserved the house. It's a house that was used in 2022. If you went uh, that year, it is out near Harrisburg. So we're more of a rural kind of feel, more mountainy kind of feel than we are beach this year. But that is finalized, October 11th to the 13th. More information on price and all of that will be coming out in the, in the near future. Um, we're going to be doing communion a little differently today. Uh, there was a lot of feedback that last week when we had pre-filled cups during confirmation that things went really smoothly. So we're going to do that. So when you come up uh, at the end of this aisle, the cups will be there, but they'll be full, so be careful. <laughs> Don't spill. Um, still, same thing, the outer rings, the purple is alcoholic wine. The inner rings, the clear liquid is non-alcoholic grape juice. So choose one with... <laughs> one per person, Joyce said. See me if you need to. I'm all right. Um, so, so watch for that change, um, and we'll see how that goes. That may work better for us, so so we're going to uh, take advantage of that. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday in the church calendar, but it is also Memorial Day. And Memorial Day is the day that, as Americans, we honor those who were in the service, those who wore the uniform of our country and did not make it home. The men and women who sacrificed, gave the ultimate sacrifice for our country. And to do that today, I have set up uh, what's called a fallen comrade table, sometimes known as a missing man table. But since women gave their lives as well, um, I'm using fallen comrade. Uh, the, the buff colored sheet with the came with your bulletin explains all of the symbolism on that table. But this is a, um, this is a very reverent day in our country uh, to remember the people who wore the uniform and made the ultimate sacrifice. So please take a minute and read through all of the symbolism that is put there on that table. And maybe after communion, if you want to stop over and offer a prayer to those who have fallen in uh, service to our country. All right. Any other announcements you'd like to share? Marty. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Marty said, hmm, those women did a pretty good job on Mother's Day. I'm feeling a little, um, I'm feeling like I need to step up a little bit here in, in uh, defense of all men. And for Father's Day, we're going to have a, a similar kind of drive. And what they 
chosen, what the mission and the discipleship team has chosen to do is to have a food drive. So between now and Father's Day, we'll move, uh, the baptismal font will go back over there and the cross will come back out. If you would like to bring in your donations of food and lay them at the foot of the cross, then on Father's Day, we will take that down to our daily uh, bread pantry in college building. So men, the women did a heck of a job. So uh, I'm not saying challenge thrown down there, but you know, there's a challenge thrown down there. So um, get yourself to uh, whatever it is that you are able to share uh, for our community and those who have less uh, will be greatly, greatly appreciated. So thanks for reminding me, Marty. We have a church softball game
the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sins. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe that there is enough to share. We question our ways and make it from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding, but I have no trust in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. We understand to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the man from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. And through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, Beloved children of God, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty Creator and ever loving, ever living God, we worship and glory we worship your glory, the eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one and three. Keep us steadfast in this faith. Defend us in all adversity and bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the meeting.
second reading comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Here ends the reading. Rise as you are able.
through Advent into the Christmas season when we have the season of Christmas and the days of Epiphany. Then we move into the season of Lent, then Easter. Last weekend was Pentecost, which is 50 Penta being five, 50, 50 days after Easter, Pentecost. <coughs> and this week we mark Holy Trinity, Holy Trinity Sunday, the end of the first half of the Christian calendar. So in the church calendar so far, at Advent, we've anticipated the arrival of Jesus. During Christmas season, we've celebrated the, the arrival of Jesus and him coming into earthly form. During Lent, we prepared our hearts and minds for Easter and Holy Week. We celebrated the empty tomb, the resurrection of Jesus, and ascension during the Easter season. Last week on Pentecost is when we celebrate the arrival of the Holy Spirit after Jesus has ascended. And today we acknowledge one of the most important aspects of our Christian faith, the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Next week we start the second half of the Christian calendar, and this year we will be working with the Gospel of Mark, as you know, every years we change which gospel we're working with. So for this year we'll be working with the gospel of Mark for the next roughly 26 weeks. We'll throw in a little bit of John here and there, but mostly we will be marching through, rather than focusing on those aspects that we did in the first half of the Christian calendar, now we're going to be talking mostly about what happened during Jesus' ministry. That's what we'll be looking at more what was it like day to day with Jesus as he was walking among us? But today we set aside to explore and pay homage to the Holy Trinity. That sounds simple, doesn't it? I'm called upon this morning to preach on the Holy Trinity. St. Augustine, who was one of the most important fathers of putting together the history of the Christian church, he said, if I had a thousand hours, it wouldn't be enough time to describe the Trinity. So if the saint needs more than a thousand hours, and I thought, well, I've got ten minutes or so with you, I'll take a crack. <laughs> Why not? But before I start trying to talk about the Trinity, let's take a minute to think about why it's even important for us to understand the Trinity. Jesus left us two commands before he died and, and ascended to heaven. Two, two things he left for us to do. Love one another. We've talked a lot about that. And I think you guys are tremendous at that. The other is love God with all your heart. With all your heart and with all your soul. Love God. So in order to love God, I think we need to try to understand God a little bit. Today we recognize the Holy Trinity, what we believe in about the Holy Trinity, a triune God is the phrase that's used, a triune God, three in one or one in three. We most commonly refer to this as the Father, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, within our Lutheran faith, the belief in the triune God is central, absolutely central to all we hold true. And we proclaim this every week when we say the creed, don't we? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. We say that every week. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the triune God. Now, during my time in seminary, I was assigned a book. I had to, well, many books, but one that I read um, stuck with me. It was by a theologian. His last name was Paniker. And his thesis in this book was that even using the word God, 
justice to God. The name God limited the limitless wonder of God. Just using the name put parameters around the power and wonder of God that we shouldn't do. We shouldn't use the word God because it limited God. That's what theologians do though, right? And I had to read a bunch of them. <laughs> but that's what they do. They like to dance on the head of a pin like that and they like to write an entire book that talks about the fact that the name God limits our understanding of God. Now I love theologians. I love when they wrestle with the word and I love when they pick at fine points like that. But when you've only got this time span of one sermon to try to proclaim the good news of the Holy Trinity, uh, that level of gazing at your navel is not really an option. So in an effort to better share the idea of the Trinity today, I read several different analogies that people like to use to explain what the Holy Trinity is. And I think analogies, just in general, all of them break down at some point. They're never perfect. But the one that I like the best, that tried to help us understand or conceptualize, get the concept of the Trinity, was to think about a three-leaf clover. Picture that in your mind, a three-leaf clover. The stem of the three-leaf clover represents God. And coming off of that stem are the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Each of them is separate from the others. Each of them can exist at the same time. All three together make up God. Not a perfect analogy, but it worked. The idea of the Trinity is that God is made up of three. Three and one. One and three. God is the Father, God is the Son, and God is the Holy Spirit. Each one of them is meant to relate to us in different ways. Each one of them is meant for us to try to make sense of the enormity of God. I think what I'll, the other thing that helps me is to try to ex understand the roles the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit play. And this is sort of where I found myself agreeing with Kanaker a little bit and that names are limiting, right? When you consider the roles you they play in our lives, new names appear. God the Father, the creator of heaven and earth. God created everything around us, absolutely everything. God the Son, Jesus, came to redeem us, came to die for our sins, to give us another chance, to give us the ability to get up and try to live in this amazing creation every single day. And God the Holy Spirit, who came after Jesus ascended to heaven and is with us to this very day, that spirit, which is another word for breath, the breath of God that is flowing in and among us every day, that you feel, I know you feel, in waves all the time. When just the right phone call comes, when just the right person shows up, when just the right finances or health or whatever the case may be, you feel that presence, the Holy Spirit. You feel that coming to you. So it's God who created everything that's here for us. And it's perfect. It's everything we need. Jesus who came to show us how to live with all of that abundance and how to live with each other in all of that abundance if we follow his teaching. And the Holy Spirit who came to sustain us and guide us and 
see the breath of God flowing among us every single day. Our triune God, the creator, the redeemer, the sustainer. I think Panikker's right in saying that language does matter. When we talk about the Holy Trinity, it is very complex. God is three in one, one in three. It can be very complex, but it doesn't need to be. The Trinity and talking about, thinking about the Trinity and what it means to us should bring us closer to God. It shouldn't be a stumbling block for us. It should bring you closer to God and closer to the arms, the three arms of the Holy Trinity. Language does matter. Just as saying fallen comrades table instead of missing man table matters because women died as well, right? That is more encompassing and works better for some people. If Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is limiting for you or difficult for you, think of the roles that they play and use those terms to pull you in and bring you closer instead. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, Creator, Savior, Comforter, our way, our truth, our life. No matter what particular names you choose, the core message of the Trinity, the core message of our triune God is simply that God is God, relational in nature, leaving us three ways to connect. He manifested, became of, uh, ex came to exist for us in three distinct ways, the creator, the redeemer, and the sustainer. And all of them are an example of perfect communion. Holy Trinity Sunday. You're lucky it's not a thousand hour sermon. But I encourage you to think about the three arms of the Holy Trinity, how you see them in your life, how you can relate to them in ways that bring you closer to God. And the church said,
shelter all who risk life and livelihood to protect others from violence, conflict, and injustice. On this, on this Memorial Day weekend, we remember those who have lost their lives in war and conflict. Lord, in your mercy, you are a God of love and not of condemnation. Quiet the hearts of all who struggle with shame, regret, or questions of self-worth. Teach us to forgive ourselves and one another. Restore wholeness to all who hope, who seek hope and healing. This week we pray especially for those on our prayer list and those we bring before you now, O oh Lord, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. in your mercy, strengthen bonds between parents, children, and families of all varieties. We pray especially for adoptive and foster families, multi-generational households, and blended families. Grant gifts of nurture and patience to all caregivers. Lord, in your mercy, the Spirit bears grateful witness to all children of God who have now come into their inheritance among the saints. As they live with hope in your gift of eternal life, so strengthen us in faith that we recognize your eternal presence even in this mortal life. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please offer each other a sign of peace.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who sharing our life, lived among us to reveal your love and glory, that our darkness should give way to your own brilliant light. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy. Supper, he took the cup and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death. Brought together as one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you in his grace. Amen. Now receive God's blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Now join our, in singing our sending hymn, God bless our native land.
necessarily drive in. I want so bad. That, you see don't, this? don't worry about it. <laughs> Send me a text, and I will probably tell you I already <laughs> did it. And, yeah, did, did you did. and then you can apologize to me if you'd like the next <laughs> day. But I need you. I, what I don't want you to do is spend an extra 25 minutes of your life coming in to take care of that. That's really not necessary. When I literally stopped on my way home to do something else I had to do here anyway. Oh, okay. And said, I looked at my phone and said, they're not there. I went in the computer and sent them to it.